Okay, about to get into know you videos. This is part two of branching. All right, so this is really what drove home branching for me once I tested this out and see how things were working. Um, so in the last video, I talked about the idea of what a branch was, right? And the branch was basically just this play area where you could do a bunch of commits and it wouldn't uh, affect the other branches. In other words, the other branches wouldn't see those commits, right? So that was kind of the big idea about branching. And I also told you that when you actually do, when you actually check out to a branch, all you're doing is you're switching kind of the context. You're switching the mindset of Git. You're switching the behavior of Git. And what that does is it basically says everything that you commit is only going to be recorded for that specific branch. And then I kind of showed you when I checked with other branches how those commits uh, weren't viewed, right? Um, so I want to kind of review that a little bit before I get into, again, the magic of the working copy and how that all works, okay? So if we go back to where we left off, what branch am I sitting on here? I'm sitting on the red feature branch, and after I git log, right, you'll see that this commit here added some readme text for the red feature, right? It's not actually sitting on any other, uh, any other branch. If I go and check out the master branch, and I do a git log, you see that red feature commit is not there. The last thing was added more instructions for readme content. And you'll see that's true for every one of these other branches. Right, added more instructions for readme content. It doesn't have that one above it that's added the readme instructions for the red feature, right? So as you can see, that commit that I did doesn't register with any of these other branches, right? And I also did that showing you kind of the checkout or whatever, right? So the very first thing to understand is that when you check out to a branch, like I said over and over again, this is a context change, right? It's not like an SVN or CVS, we're actually going to a different copy of the code, right? Branches in SVN, for example, are entire copies of the code. Uh, Git's not like this. When you check out, quote, check out a branch, what you're doing is you're changing Git's behavior, right? So the Git commit only applies to the red feature branch. The Git commit no longer applies to the master branch. Now there's a other there's another really big thing though that Git checkout does that's really quite magical, uh, and I'm going to demonstrate that to you right now. But before I demonstrate it, I have to go over the concept of a working copy. Okay. So what the working copy is, you can basically think of it as your folder and all the files that are sitting in that folder. Okay. So if I look at that folder again, my piece of software, the files that are sitting in here right now inside my Git repository, okay, the files that are currently sitting there right now make up what's called my working copy, okay? So this is my working copy in here. Now, Git checkout, what I said, it did a context change, right? But one of the other really cool things it does is it actually modifies your working copy. It actually changes these files. Now, how does it change those files? It changes those files to match the latest snapshot of the branch you're checking out to, okay? Now, that's a big mouthful. Let me, let me write that down, okay? So, git checkout, what it does is changes your working copy to match the latest snapshot, or commit, if you will, of the branch you're checking out to. All right, so what do I mean by that? So, if I look at our red feature diagram, right? So we, we branched off here, we made those readme instructions change, and then we had another commit right here, right? So the last commit of the red feature has those changes in it. But what was the last commit of the master branch, right? If we look at the master branch, go back to the master branch and look at the log. The last thing we had was added more instructions and readme content, right? We don't have that red feature commit. So the last snapshot was sitting here, right? So when I do a git checkout master, it's gonna modify my files to match this snapshot right here. When I do a git checkout red feature, it's gonna modify those files right here. And you can see this happening in real time. It's really cool, okay? 
So how I'm going to show you this is the content of readme, right? Because remember, readme.txt, that was the file that's changed, right? When we went to this snapshot, this file changed and it had some other text in there. And it's different from here, right? So what I'm going to do, just to show you this in real time, I'm going to open that readme file in uh, this program called Aptana Studio. It's just an IDE. The only reason I'm using this is because I know Aptana updates things on the fly. You don't have to hit refresh of the file. It, like if you change this file somewhere else, you don't have to hit refresh. Like in Notepad++ and stuff like that, you go back to the file and ask you, do you want to refresh it because it's been changed elsewhere? This just does it in real time. So what you're seeing here is the contents of readme.txt as it stands now, okay? Now watch the magic happen. So right now, I'm sitting on git master, right? Or sorry, I'm sitting on git master. We know that this readme file has changed in the latest uh, latest commit of red feature, right? So let's watch it. Let's do git checkout red feature. Now, if what I'm saying is true, then when I do a git checkout of red feature, git is going to massage these files. It's going to edit these files and change them to match the latest state of this branch right here, which in case is that last thing, right? And we know, because we've been doing this example, that readme was the file that was changed. So when I run this command, this file should be changed to match that checkout. So I'm going to hit enter and watch the file. Boom. It's kind of fast, but you see, look, this is for the red feature only. It's right there. Let's go back to the master branch. Watch it up here again, okay? Boom, it's gone. So Git is actively changing your working copy. And this is the other magical thing that Git Checkout does. Git Checkout, it starts by changing the behavior of Git. In other words, what, how are the commits going to work, right? And the other thing it does is it massages all your files in your working directory, in your working copy, to match whatever the last thing here was. All right. Now I want to stress this again because this is pretty cool stuff. So let's do something. Let's, let's add another file to say the green feature that these guys don't have, okay? So let's go to the green feature. Okay, and let's add a brand new file, okay? So green file. All right, so let's create this green file. All right, so if I look here now, uh, the green file is there. Now remember what branch I'm sitting on. I'm sitting on the green feature. So if I look at the status, it is sitting in the unstaged area. So I'm going to stage that. Git add green file.rb. And then I'm going to commit that green file. Okay. So now remember, because I'm sitting on the green branch, or the green feature branch, that commit, that last commit that I just ran, only applies to this branch, right? So in other words, that adding file and that brand new green file only applies to this snapshot here. These snapshots don't know anything about that green file, and you can see it in real time again. Let's, let's open up Finder. Uh, for Windows users, this would be my computer. Whoops. Okay, take a look at the file list here. This is the file list sitting right here, right? And you'll see that green file is right there, right? So watch what happens when I check out to a branch where the latest snapshot has no idea about the green file. Git checkout master. Now watch up here, okay? Boom, the file's gone. The file's gone because the latest snapshot of master has no idea about that file. The latest snapshot of master, the state looked like this. All right. And if you check out back to the green feature and take a look at that, boom, it's added right back. This was a huge eye opener for me for what Git checkout was actually doing. Right. So Git checkout does two things. One, it changes the context. In other words, it changes the behavior of Git, where your commits are going and how, what branch they apply to. Right. The other thing it does is it actually changes your working copy. This is very different from like SVN or other source controls, right? Other source control systems, you would actually have a copy of the code, like every branch you would have a copy of the code. Not with Git. Git, you have one working copy, 
And when you check out to a different branch, Git is going to massage the contents of that to match what the latest snapshot is, right? So this is very important when it comes to branching. So Git checking out and creating uh, and switching your working copy to those files, right? See it one more time. Check out master. Watch the files. Gone, right? Git check out green feature. It's back. And you can play around with it. Now, again, some of you might be asking, how the hell does Git do this? Again, the Git ignore folder. That sorry, not Git ignore. The dot Git folder, right? That's a that's a hidden folder, and it stores all this information in there. All the smarts that I was talking about, right? It stores that temporary green file in that file so that it knows that when you switch the green feature, it's just going to copy that file over and copy the state of that, right? Okay. So this is Git checkout. It's very important. So in the next video, I'll get more, more practical uses, but I want you to really wrap your head around this, uh, this concept of Git checkout. It'll help you down the road like crazy. One thing I, I will mention before I go though, is when you are doing a Git checkout, all right, your Git is overriding your working copy, right? So if you're sitting on the red feature and you have the latest snapshot of the red feature and you switch out to the green feature, it's gonna copy over all those files, right? With the, the versions from green feature. If you have any changes that are not committed, in other words, you have some changes that are going to be overwritten by doing a git checkout, git checkout will fail on you. It'll tell you you have some changes and I'm going to overwrite them. So it's not going to do that. It's going to say save those changes somewhere else or commit them before you do a checkout. And I'll prove that to you right now. So if I look at git, uh, what branch am I sitting on right now? Git green feature, right? Okay. So uh, let's change the readme file adding green feature okay so now this modified version of readme is sitting in my working copy and it hasn't been committed yet so git doesn't know the snapshot if i try to switch to another branch now remember what switching to another branch means it's going to copy over all these files with whatever the latest snapshot from the red feature is you'll see what happens it won't do it. It, say you, you, it says you have some changes in here that are not yet recorded, so I'm not gonna blow those away. I'm not gonna overwrite those with what's in red feature. So make sure you save that temporarily somewhere else, uh, or you know save that temporarily somewhere else, or revert back to the latest snapshot before I override those. By the way, if you ever get stuck in this situation, yeah, save that somewhere else, save the changes somewhere else, or if you don't care about the changes that are sit there, you can always retrieve the old, the latest version of that, that file by just doing a git checkout and the name of the file rather than a branch name, okay? All right, so that's git checkout. Big conceptual leap, but once you get that in your head, it's gonna solve a lot, it's gonna like make things work a lot better. Okay, on to the next video.